Today's video lesson is going to examine a topic that is very important but is often left undiscussed in many economics classes. We're going to be looking at how bond markets work. We're also going to look at the relationship between the price that government bonds sell for on bond markets and their yields, otherwise known as the interest rates on those bonds. We're going to conclude by investigating the relationship between the level of a government's budget deficits or its national debt and the interest rate in the economy. The lessons to which this lesson most closely relates are probably those on the crowding out effect. I have done two videos on these topics which can be found on my YouTube channel. Let's start with some definitions. We're going to first define what a bond actually is. Everybody has heard of government bonds, but I find that students often don't actually understand what a bond is. Defined simply, a bond is basically a certificate of debt. Bonds may be issued by corporations or, in this case, governments in order to finance deficits. This is a fancy way of saying that governments can issue bonds in order to spend money that they don't actually have. Let's have a quick look at what a government bond might actually look like. Now today, bonds are traded and bought and sold electronically. But in the old days, you can see that this bond is from 1952. Uh, the purchaser of a bond might have actually received a paper certificate that looks something like this. Have a close look here. You can see that this is a $100 U.S. government bond that in 10 years will pay the owner of this bond $100. So this is interesting. If you look closely, it says 10 years from the issue date hereof, the United States of America will pay $100. The question is, how does this help the United States of America? If an individual were to have bought this bond today, then they would not be able to have collected their $100 until 10 years later. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how the current price of government bonds determines the yields on bonds, and this determines the borrowing costs that a government faces. Back to our definition here. A bond is simply a certificate of debt issued to finance deficits. Deficits exist whenever the amount of spending that a government incurs exceeds the amount of tax revenues collected. A bond is sometimes thought of as an IOU, meaning that once an individual has purchased a bond, the government owes that individual money sometime in the future equal to the face value of the bond itself. So what is the bond market? We're going to look at a graph for the bond market in this video, but we should define who the demanders and who the suppliers are of government bonds in the bond market. The bond market can be defined as the place where governments issue bonds which are bought by investors. The investors in this case, the demanders of government bonds, are the creditors and the governments are the, the debtors. Let's move over to our graph on the right here. To keep things simple, I'm doing a very simple scenario, examining the market for one year, $100 US government bonds. In the United States, we refer to these bonds as treasury bills or sometimes treasury notes, but that's just a fancy word for bonds. The demand for US government bonds will be downward sloping. I'll explain why in just a moment. The supply of US government bonds will be upward sloping. The price of a U.S. government bond is therefore determined by the equilibrium between the supply and the demand. For the sake of our explanation, let's assume that the current equilibrium price of one year $100 U.S. government bonds is $95. And the equilibrium quantity we'll just identify as QE. Now this is where things get a little bit confusing for students of economics. How could a $100 U.S. government bond be sold for $95. It seems like a simple investment. Buy for $95, sell for $100. But here's the catch that we must be aware of. This bond is only worth $100 one year from now. In other words, if you buy this government bond today, what you are essentially doing is lending the U.S. government $95 today and they will pay you back with $100 a year from now. So let's go ahead and calculate what we call the yield on a $100 one-year US government bond. To do so, we must calculate the return that an investor who buys this bond will earn in terms of percentages. To do that, we must calculate the percent change in the investor's investment. The investor will sell the bond back to the government for $100 in one year after buying it for $95 today. 
To calculate the return on this investment, we must simply divide the amount by which the government paid the investor beyond the initial investment, which is $5 by the initial investment itself, and turn this into a percentage. So a $95 investment today for a $100 U.S. government bond maturing in one year would yield a 5.3% interest rate, as we have just shown. So the next question is, what is the relationship between bond prices and bond yields? What if, hypothetically, the demand for U.S. government bonds increased today on the bond market by investors, and today the price of these $100 one-year U.S. government bonds was driven up to $98? Bonds are an asset just like other assets. If their demand rises, they become more scarce and their prices rise. But what impact will this have on the cost of borrowing for the government? Let's have a quick look. We can do a similar calculation to determine the yield on a $98 investment today. Let's use the same method we did when the price was $95 to determine the new yield on government bonds now that demand has increased and the price has risen to $98. Now the return for the investor will be just $2, 100 minus the initial investment of 98 divided by $98. This will yield a return of 2.05%. So the price of $98 for a one-year $100 government bond corresponds with an interest rate of 2.05%. As the demand for U.S. government bonds increased, the cost to the U.S. government of borrowing a particular amount of money to finance this deficit decreases. So we can now answer our second question here. What is the relationship between bond prices and bond yields? This is an inverse relationship. The higher the price a particular bond sells for today, the lower the yield on that bond and the lower the borrowing costs for the government. We could look back at our graph and show one more scenario in which the demand for bonds decreases today. Let's say demand falls to D2 due to a perception that a government might not be able to pay its bonds back or perhaps another type of investment such as stocks on the stock market has become more attractive leading to less investors wanting to put their money into government debt. If the price of a US government bond fell to $90 today, the government would have to offer a higher yield on those bonds in order to attract investors. As we can see, at $90, there would be an interest rate of approximately 11% on those bonds. So we've shown that there is an inverse relationship between bond prices and interest rates on government debt. Interest rates determine the cost to a government of borrowing money. The higher the interest rate, the more costly it is for government to borrow money because they'll have to pay back their lenders more money in the future than they would at lower interest rates. Let's now talk quickly about what might determine the demand for particular government's bonds. So far, we've shown scenarios in our graph where demand has increased for bonds, driving their prices up and their yields down, and scenarios where demand has decreased, driving, driving their prices down and their yields up. Generally speaking, demand for a government's bond is going to be based primarily on the perceived risk of lending money to a particular government. If a government is perceived to be very stable and likely to repay its debt, demand for its bonds will be fairly high. If, on the other hand, a government is perceived to be very unstable and unlikely to repay its debt, generally speaking, demand would fall, driving the cost of borrowing for that government up. Two examples I can think of here are the United States and Greece. United States is a country that has very stable economic growth, has a GDP that accounts for about one quarter of total world output, and is highly likely to repay any debt that it incurs today. Therefore, demand for U.S. government bonds is high relative to that for countries like Greece, which are much less stable and much more likely to default on their debt in the future. As a result, interest rates on U.S. government bonds are much lower than they are on those for countries like Greece and others which are facing instability and possibly unlikely to repay those debts. So we've looked at things that could shift demand for government bonds. Let's now talk about how a change in the supply of government bonds can affect the borrowing costs of a government. So the question now is when would large budget deficits or a large national debt drive up interest rates? This is a big question in economics today and among policymakers. Let's assume, for instance, that the United States enacts an expansionary fiscal policy in which it lowers taxes and increases government spending, requiring it to issue billions of dollars of new government bonds. In the market for $100 one-year government bonds, therefore, we would expect to see the supply increase.
an increase in the government bonds necessary to finance a budget deficit, ceteris paribus, in other words, assuming all else equal, would drive down the price of those government bonds necessary in order to increase the quantity demanded, which in this case would refer to attracting new lenders willing to lend the U.S. government additional money to finance its deficit. Ceteris paribus, assuming all else equal, an increase in the supply of U.S. government bonds would drive down the price of those bonds and increase the yield. In this case, the yield or the cost of borrowing to the government would increase from 5.3% to 11%. The second part of our question here, how would an increase in the national debt drive up interest rates? Another concern of policymakers today. A country running a very large national debt in excess of 100% of its GDP, such as Greece, would likely deter potential investors, which drives down the demand for the government bonds because of fear that the government's excessive debt might reduce its ability to repay that debt. A decrease in the demand combined with an increase in the supply necessary to finance large deficits is going to further drive down the price of government bonds and drive up interest rates in the economy. In this hypothetical scenario, if the price of a U.S. government bond fell from $95 to $85 due to an excessively large national debt and large deficits, then we would expect interest rates to rise to 17%. So each of our prices here on the vertical axis corresponds with a different interest rate. An increase in the supply of bonds necessary to finance a deficit by itself should drive down the price of bonds and drive up the yields. A decrease in demand for bonds resulting from a lack of confidence in the government's ability to repay its debt will further drive up yields and down the price of bonds, reminding us that there is an inverse relationship between the price of government bonds and the yields on those bonds. So this raises the question, what could a government do to reduce its borrowing costs? We hear a lot in the media today about austerity. Austerity refers to when a government reduces its budget deficits or moves towards a more balanced budget in order to reduce interest rates in the economy and encourage private sector spending. On our graph, we can see that austerity would require less borrowing in the bond market as budget deficits would be smaller, decreasing the supply of government bonds on the market and also, in theory, increasing demand for those bonds as the government's debt decreases. Reduced supply and increased demand, the desired outcome of pursuing austerity measures, should drive up the price of government bonds and reduce the borrowing cost. In this case, an increase in the price of government bonds from $95 to $99 would reduce America's borrowing cost to 1%. In this video, we have defined a bond. We have introduced the bond market, distinguishing between the supply of bonds, which is from governments issuing debt certificates, and the demand for bonds, which comes from investors hoping to put their money into safe assets that return positive yields for the investment. We've also talked about the relationship between bond prices and bond yields. At higher prices, governments are able to borrow money at a lower interest rate, whereas when demand is low or supply is high, interest rates tend to rise since the price of government bonds must fall in order to reach a market equilibrium. The final question here we'll talk about in our next video. When would a large budget deficit or debt not drive up interest rates? This question is a bit too complicated to answer in the amount of time we have in this video.